Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Spee here. And today I'm gonna teach you how to hit some devious timings. These are some timings that you can't even imagine. You can't even dream of these timings. So let's get into it. We're playing some Bristleback here. Obviously what I'm gonna be teaching you mainly applies to Bristleback. However, some of the techniques and strategies apply to all heroes. And so yeah, hear me out and I'm gonna help you get a ton of items. I went 19 to 0 in this match, obviously a game league classic. If you guys don't know what that is, you haven't been a fan of the channel for long enough. It's basically a game where you just pop off and everything goes right. However, my big thing here is that my Ags timing is minute and this is with no coddle. Like, I have to deal with the mana problems myself. I don't have some coddle just giving me mana. I have a 13 minute axe. This is two minutes earlier than the average. I would even argue 15 minutes is a pretty good timing. So yeah, this is a nasty, nasty timing. And then from there, things stay on par. I get my Lotus a little late because my courier died. But yeah, ridiculous timings. I'm gonna teach you guys how to snowball and let's get into it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do wanna let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're gonna teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you wanna become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. So for starting items, I actually go a little bit greedy here. This is something that I think is quite good on this hero because the early waves, especially against certain heroes, are really easy. For instance, Faceless Void is never going to pressure me early on, and so I feel no real need to buy like Gauntlets of Strength. I don't think Stick is that good against Phoenix Faceless Void. At least I thought that was my lane. It ended up being techie, so maybe Stick was kind of good. Um, but yeah, I don't really need, like uh, most of the time I'll have a Stick. However, I didn't feel it was going to be that good. I ended up being kind of wrong because it was techies, but whatever. Early on, I'm just going to use my quill immediately because I want to keep the wave slightly pushed so it's hard for them to trade into me. And from there, I'm going to focus mostly on securing creeps. I get some good damage on Void just because quills are a strong ability early on, but we're able to get a clean 4 CS. From there, I ship my career to the secret shop. I want to get my ring of health as soon as humanly possible. And that's the main goal of saving gold like this, right? Just get your ring of health a little bit earlier. Now from there, all I really have to do is just pull a good amount of creep aggro. I don't want to pull it immediately, I want to pull creep aggro when the creep is like half HP for the most part, so that I can pull it back and then when it's in deny range, I can pull it again and then hit quill, preventing void from ever going for a deny. I think I was able to get this CS as well with a quill, which is pretty nice. So yeah, we have not flawless CS, I got bullied off the wave by techies a little bit, but really really solid CS and I'm not really focused on training at all. I'm not trying to hit the support. I'm not trying to hit the void. I'll only do that if they overextend for a range creep super hardcore. Outside of that, I'm ignoring the fact that they're killing my weaver because frankly, it's not gonna help my game if I miss a bunch of CS to do 100 damage to Faceless Void while he chases a weaver. Now we will admit the main selling point of this game uh, that isn't exactly normal is the fact that I do get a kill on Faceless Void, which is pretty uncommon for Bristleback because time dilation usually prevents that from happening. Also, he can jump away if he gets low and reset the cool damage, but he ended up super hard committing on my, my weaver here and I almost got a double kill. I thought that quill would hit the techies. I thought that one would hit him too. Unfortunately, Bristleback's like a semi slow hero and this one didn't hit techies either. Oh no, it did it. He just healed and the quills reset. But yeah, we get a massive kill on Void. So that obviously super amped my game. But we have 18 CS, which is extremely good. Obviously after we clean up this wave, we'll have 22. I even uh, do a little side pull with my quills here. But the big thing I'd like to talk about is actually this Mana Boots build. If you have a pretty easy matchup, for instance, you're against something like Phantom Assassin, a hero that can't pressure you, Maybe you're against Slark, that hero is not too good at pressuring Bristleback. Faceless Void is an example, for sure. Uh, these heroes that just don't do that much early game damage, or you just happen to get off to a good start and you want to go a little greedy, this Mana Boots is wonderful in games like this, because otherwise I would run out of mana here. Even if I had a stick, I would have severe mana problems at this point, right? There's no way around it. With the Mana Boots though, I'm going to be able to comfortably spam Quills and farm out Creep Waves efficiently. Now at this point, my main goal is to push out the wave and then drag the wave. The most efficient thing you can do on almost any hero is drag the wave from in between the tier 1 and the tier 2 over to nearby camps. Now, I say this, however, you have to keep in mind that it's also one of the most dangerous things you can do. It leaves you very susceptible to getting TP'd on because if you're in this location, a TP to here will very likely kill you and I've died many times doing this. Like, many, many times. It's a big risk you're taking, but, you know, you're playing the game of efficiency. A semi-safer way to do it that's a bit less predictable is you can quelling through the trees like this and then quill and that's how I go about it this time. Taking this camp is very, very risky. It's a good way to die. <laughs> but I do it here. The reason why, I saw the OD mid 
and uh, I don't think Void threatens me yet. However, I'm paying very close attention to his level so that if he hits level 6, I'll back off. But because my game was so good, I know he's not level 6, he's level 4, and as a result, I can almost completely ignore him. Now, the only exception to the rule here uh, of, of like most efficient thing to do is drag the wave is to uh, stack, right? For most heroes, you're just going to, if you can, keep dragging the wave, like literally over and over again. You're going to drag it, kill a camp, drag it, kill a camp, drag it, kill a camp. This is optimal in almost every scenario, except on Bristleback, I'm going to prioritize going for stacks. Right, I'm gonna stack up the Ancients, stack up the large camp, you can do it together. All you have to do is hit the Ancients at 52, uh, cool this as fast as humanly possible, and you will get the stack. And then from there, what's kind of nice is if when you're stacking, the safe laner's still in the lane, they'll push the wave into you, right? And what's really convenient about this, the, like the stacking, is if they shove the wave into you, you're gonna be able to clear the next wave, which you'll see, um, oh no, I ended up chasing quite a bit, but I'm gonna clear the next wave, and then immediately there's another wave waiting for me. And that's why stacking the Ancients is really great, right? Because if they push in the wave, not only do you get the stack, but you also kind of get a nice little double wave to some extent. So it's really efficient. And then after pushing in that wave, it's actually time to stack again. So it's absolutely perfect. Stacking basically enables you to clear a double wave if they push in the wave. Remember, that's the caveat. Uh, you, you can stack, push in the wave, and then stack again. And this is obviously insanely efficient. I'm level seven here with my Vanguard. You can take stacks at level five. All you have to do is ship salves. Uh, like the level seven quills are really not that much better. Honestly, the cool stack damage is really what uh, kills stacks. Like, frankly, you can kill stacks even with early levels of quills because it's mostly about the stack damage, which frankly doesn't scale. It barely, barely scales. And so, yeah, you can take stacks at level five if your game is bad and you need to recover. Like maybe you just can't lane. You can just jungle on this hero. It's very mana intensive and you'll kind of need mana boots to do that. But I buy two salves, which might seem like a grief, and honestly, I would obviously prefer to just get Seeds of Serenity. I always take Seeds of Serenity if I can get it, because it will allow me to take stacks and lane and only have to buy one salve. I still will buy a salve if I get Seeds of Serenity, but if I don't and I'm taking a Giga stack like that, I'll tend to just buy two salves. Yes, you can get away with one if you really feel like you won't get uh, contested, but I don't like to take a big risk with that and die. That will throw off like the game entirely. I'd rather be full HP so that if I take a fight here, or if, if they gank me that there's no chance they can do it. So it's a bit of a, of a like a don't take a risk situation. But once again, we're gonna clear the wave and go back to stack. It's a very natural rotation. If the wave I'm clearing is uh, the nine minute wave or the eight minute wave, right? The, this wave that's coming in now spawned at nine, right? If it's the eight minute wave or the nine minute wave, basically the wave that comes in at 20, then you know you'll be able to clear it and stack. Right, clear it with a camp and stack. There's no camps here, so whatever. Obviously, I can't clear camp and stack, but I knew these were getting stacked by Silencer, which is super hype. <laughs> and obviously a big reason why I'm hitting a 13 minute Axe. Yes, my support stacked for me. I know, I, I'm gonna read the comments, but speed, my supports never stack. I know they probably don't. You gotta do it yourself, okay? I get it. They don't stack for you. You should try to tell them and you should continuously remind them. Like every time it comes up, if you're good enough, you, you should be able to see it, right? I'm good enough to see it. You should be able to too, right? Be able to say, okay, the stack's coming up. Tell someone to do it if they're nearby. I'll do that if my supports are forgetting. Like I, I do, I, I'll do it every time because uh, it's super, super key. And now <laughs> I'm level 10 and Void's level 7 because Ancients give so much XP. It's like insane, like absolutely insane, super ridiculous. And so once again, because we stack, Void pushes in the wave and we get a double wave. It's rinse, repeat. That's why being able to uh, like play a stacking hero like this or Beastmaster, in my opinion, you can hit like nasty, nasty timings. I mean, look at my net worth. I'm super farm. Thousand gold ahead of the next. I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, I'm super farm. And any hero that can take and stack ancients, I guess there's not that many of them. Um, but yeah, you can hit these devilish timings by doing this. Now at this point, I push in the wave and I decide to stack this camp. This was another. Like I'm just going crazy with the efficiencies here. I take the tower, which obviously gives me a ton of gold. So that that also helped my gold. We won our lane, we took all the stacks. I don't force the tower very hard, like trying to take it because honestly it's a risk and it just makes me lose creeps. So I put very little priority on taking the tower. I just don't think it's worth it. Obviously if your team comes in and like it, it's fast, you should do it. But I was able to push in the wave here, make a stack on this camp, use my quelling blade to do that, farm up this camp. And yeah, that is a 12 minute and 20 second axe. So obviously it has to come on the courier, but uh, that that is that is the timing right there as I get another ancient stack. I called them to do this one though, keep that in mind. Like you might be like, oh my God, they're so good at it. It's like, yeah, but I'm telling them to do it. Like, yeah, I'm actually gonna go to the sound You'll see when I tell them to do it. Cause I remember saying, it. 
I usually say it around the 30 second mark so that if they're doing something, they still have time to react and do it. You'll see, I probably say it like right here and boom, he was started walking down and then he's like, oh shit, <laughs> it's time to stack for speed dope. And so yeah, he's gonna come stack and now I get my Axe. And I, I don't mind doing this with Axe. I don't necessarily instantly look to fight because you can then take like Ancients instantly like this. You can just, I mean, this this wasn't even, I, I like kind of missed the Ancients. I should have prioritized. I should, you should drag the large camp to the Ancients and then make sure you hit the Ancients because uh, the Ancients are obviously a lot tankier with the Axe. But yeah, like I don't really mind continuing to farm because for me, the main timing is the, is the shard. But whatever, they dive mid here, like the Magnus is just feeding. So I'm just getting like fed kills. Easy peasy. And that's the main thing with the timing, but let's keep going. I'm going to play out the rest of the match so you can see how I actually use these timings. As my courier died, which really sucked because it delayed my, sh my, it killed my wand, which is really nice for these early game fights. By the way, I don't upgrade wand if I don't have to. Like, once again, this is the god game because I've received like minimal pressure and was able to take giga stacks. So on average, you should aim for minute 15 to minute 16 for sure. Yeah, we continue on pushing up. And at this point, I want to farm aggressively if I can. Obviously, as I said, the shard is most important. This is the giga timing, right? It allows you to take stupid, stupid fights. But yeah, at this point, I want to play up. I don't want to farm ancients too much anymore because I want to be in a position to shut down the enemy. I want to be in a position to like basically connect with my teammates and run them over because I know we're like super winning the game. At least I'm so farmed where I know I can basically solo carry. But unfortunately, as I said, my courier's dead, which really screwed me because I'd play like a complete psycho at this point if I had it. But unfortunately, I don't. And I could take Ancients here, but I also don't mind giving it to Morphling. And you'll see what I do is like now that my shard's coming, this is, as I said, the timing. Uh, I also feel like they really lack damage to kill me. Like OD at this point is kind of trash. Magnus doesn't do any damage to me. Even Void doesn't do that much damage. So I won't always push into Ancients like this. This is kind of me just like recognizing the game state and saying like, I think my matchups are so good. Like, yes, they have time dilation, but that's it. Which is why I'm buying Lotus to counter time dilation and, and completely. And you can get it really fast because Lotus, uh, the Vanguard disassembles in the Lotus and so does Mana Boots. So you can get it really fast, similar to Bloodstone. And now with the shard, yeah, it's just it's just time to get to work. Once you hit the shard, the game just kind of ends because you can just chase infinitely. Like if you don't know how it works, it's a 10 second cooldown. It has like a billion cast range. Like look at this cast range. Did I not use it here? Oh, no. oh I did. I used the kill techies. Yeah, but it has like a gajillion cast range as I wanted to kill Egg here. Apparently my team, the, the puck didn't think we could kill it. We definitely could have. <laughs> oh, but I got my eggs off at the right before the egg went off. And yeah, you can see the shard it just oh it just shoots out two quill stacks. And now this guy just has 11 armor. He like has so little armor. He's under the tier three. Like he's getting a bonus five armor and he's at 11. Like it's just ridiculous how much armor it reduces and the void TP in, which is obviously stupid. And yeah, we can continue to take their ancients now because the best thing you can do when you're winning the game is take the enemy ancients. Like, okay, th the best thing to do is just kill all, kill them all constantly, but like in terms of taking space. Uh, generally the Ancients, especially if they have an Ancient Farmer, which, you know, they can take it with Void Magnus, no problem, or, or Mag can take it alone, or OD can take it alone. If we continue to take these Ancients every minute, it allows us to stay very close to them, which I want. I want to be able to fight them and be in a position to do so as we find the OD here. Kind of waste my Ags, which was a bit stupid. I should have known the Astral would cancel it out, because I, I could have killed him there if I had it. Um, but yeah, I can just bully them out. If anyone shows in a lane, it's a very easy execution. And as I said, this is a free Bristle game. So I understand that, okay, every time they show, as they block the Ancients, or did I block? I think I, I don't know, but I can play like a Psycho. In some games, I'm gonna be more patient. I'm gonna take more defensive camps. I'm gonna look to smoke with my team to find an angle. I'm not just gonna run face first at the at the first person I see. I'm having a super free game. Like a, I'm having a Giga game with Giga matchups. And that's why this is a Game Leap Classic as I'm diving their base. I have a Bloodstone in minute 19. I have 15K net worth. But this is how you kind of get it, right? You take their Ancients, so you continue to farm, you cut their creep waves, and by doing that, uh, not only do you get to farm, you get to fight, right? And that's how these pro teams close off the map. They take the enemy camps, and they connect to their teammates as fast as they can after taking those camps. As I take the Tormentor in one go, then I take his stacked camp. I even told my Silencer to stack. <laughs> Did he do it? No, was it the next minute? Oh, yeah. No, this wasn't even blocked. Okay, I blocked it. I told him the stack one, which I thought was funny. Was it the next one? And all right, that's going to be about the end of the game. This is like really stupid for me. At this point, I should just go get Roche and then go high ground because then there's literally nothing they can do. Uh, but I decided to just end the game early because, well, I guess there was nothing they could do anyway as, uh, yeah, they, they're a little weak. They're a little weak. But okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you learned quite a bit about hitting, hitting timings. I can already hear the comments, like literally if you go read the comments, just most people don't get to the end of the video, right? So if you got to the end of the video, you watch the whole thing, 
and you have an open mind, you're going to be like, oh, th these were some good points to be. I should invade the enemy side of the map when I'm having a good game. I need to think about my matchups and think, do they have damage to kill me? If they do, I should play a bit more defensive. I should look for smokes with my... I should maybe take a Roshan, because I could have taken an earlier Roshan. I can make plays on my vision. However, this game, I knew I was Exodia. I know they have nothing to touch me, so I play up. And that's that's what you guys can do too. You know, let them push in your wave. Stack, let them push in the wave. You get the double wave. Clear the double wave. You go stack again. And these are the things you can rinse, repeat, and repeat in your matches to be consistently a better farmer. But if you read the comments, it's going to be like, But I don't get stacks. I don't get stacks any game, and my lane's impossible. And then you watch their lane, and they, like, have the wrong items. They never pull creep aggro. They miss a ton of CS, and you're like, hmm. But okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.